Welcome. Let's get started with Top 50 Shortcuts for Logos Bible Software 2025 Part 2. As I said, we covered the first 23 shortcuts in our last session. We're going to knock out those next 27 in this session. The next webinar is going to be the Personal Book Builder 2025. So we haven't done that in a long time, and so there's there's not too many updates, but we got a new interface and some things you need to be aware of. So we're going to overview the personal book builder, give you some templates and uh, help you get the most out of this amazing tool. Let's begin with shortcut number 24, clone it. This is one I literally use every single time I open up Logos Bible software. Now I'm going to open up a Bible. I'm going to open up a commentary. I'm going to open up a, a guide. Let's say, there we go, and we'll put that right in the middle. So on the PC, if you hold the control button down, if you're on a Mac, you'll have to hold the command button down. All you do is grab a tab at the top there. Like I said, hold down the control or the command, and you just simply drag. And as soon as you drag, you'll see this little shortcut. And you can drag it anywhere you want, as you can see by the gray shaded areas. I'm going to put it right to the right. And that literally duplicates the window. So we did that with our Bible. I'm going to do it now with a guide. Left click, hold down the control button for a PC, command button for the Mac. And there you go. I just duplicated the guide. We'll do it with a commentary. Left click, hold down the left mouse button, hold down the control, then drag. Great little feature. Uh, I use it primarily for the Bible. Uh, I want to jump to a new verse. I don't want to lose my current spot. So open up a new Bible, and then I can jump very quickly to a different location. So clone it. Duplicate nearly anything. Let's go to shortcut number 25, linking and targeting. So here's a scenario. Let me open up a Bible, and let's open up not only uh, a commentary, like a study Bible, but we'll open up another one. And this can be really helpful. In fact, let me open up two Bibles, two different ones. So here's a good example of using linking and targeting. So what I want to do, and this is pretty traditional, let's link our Bible to our commentary. So we click on the home, we click link set, choose A, and we're going to match that to our study Bible. So we click home, we click link set A, and now wherever the Bible goes, our commentary goes. But sometimes you have a desire where Let's say you're scrolling through here and you see a footnote and you see another passage. Now, if you click this link, what happens is the Bible moves and the commentary moves. You've lost your spot. Now, it's not a big deal. You could go over to the top left here and click the back button and you're good to go. But it's really convenient when you can set up maybe a different translation or uh, another Bible or another commentary and you can send that link to that location. Let me close my verse list down. We're in our Bible, and here's what we're talking about. I'm going to double-click on the word devised. And when you double-click, you'll notice that immediately it did a concorded search. How did we do that? And by the way, notice it did a morph search. This is accomplished by going to the Tools menu, type in Program, and click on Program Settings. And then you can scroll down, and what you're looking for is the double-click action. That's located right here. Let me make the screen a little bit bigger and a little bit easier to read. There we go. And by the way, that's a little shortcut there. Every window has a three dots, and you just look for that little A and big A. And if you have the ability, you can make that window customized just to your size. All right, so here we are at the double-click action. If you click on the drop-down menu, you have several options. I chose search, and that makes it real easy uh, to do this double-click concordant search. Absolutely love it. And by the way, since we're here, there's the triple click action. And if we click on that, I've chosen look up. Now, this can be a little tricky with the fingers. But let me see if I can do this real quick, three times real fast. Notice what happened. It opened up my dictionary, my preferred dictionary, to the word. And this is, a first, this is your first prioritized dictionary. It's going to look it up. Very, very powerful. Love this feature. And uh, so take advantage of that. Now, notice this is also built on the lemma. All right, notice that, that I'm doing that on the lemma, prefer lemmas. If we were to do this, let's say, in a regular dictionary, let me just go open up Webster's Dictionary, and I'm going to double-click on the word creed. Notice what it did. It did a book search. So just be aware. Let me do a triple-click because that was a concordant search. Here, it went to my 
encyclopedia in my prioritized list. So you could set up a dictionary for English words and allow to get an instant definition lookup. So very powerful. Just understand when you're double clicking and triple clicking, what information will come back based on the book you're using. Bibles will have different results than non-Bibles. All right, that is shortcut number 32 and shortcut number 33. And let's now go to shortcut number 34. What time is it? And this is really uh, an important search, one of those that I just use all the time. It's date searching. Let me go ahead and put that in the chat box so you can see that. Let me go ahead and run it. Now, here's how the search works. You put date colon, and then in quotes, you put the date range. So in this, this case, 600 to 500 BC. It's good to start with the high number and go to low number for BC and then go from low to high for AD, but it's not necessary. In fact, let's test that theory right now. Let's go to 500 to 600. All right, and then we have the BC, and in this case, I added near, all capital letters, David, because I didn't want just dates. I wanted to find those dates and David. As you can see, switching the dates around the years didn't matter, but it is a good practice to do 600, you know, high to low for BC and low to high for AD. Now we're searching the dates with a specific criteria in mind, in this case, David. And this will allow you to find throughout your whole library any date references for your searching. So I just love to find out what time is it with the date searching. By the way, if you open Favorites, Tools, and you type in Fav and click on Favorites, I recommend, so you don't forget this search, is just take that search that you ran, left-click on the tab, and create a folder called Searching, and then drag that in there. And then you'll always have this special search. You don't have to remember all the syntax. You just know that if you go to favorites and searching, you'll see the date search. You can click it and it will run the search for you. So I love, that's a little bonus shortcut right there for you. All right, so that's shortcut number 34. Let's go to shortcut number 35, the trifecta Hebrew search. All right, let's go to Genesis 1.1 and walk you through this process. I'm going to click the search icon and I'm going to choose books. Now, what you want to do before you do any search on Hebrew is do the following. Left parenthesis, and I do three spaces, one, two, three, then all capital letters or, hit space bar again, one, two, three, then all capital letters or, once again, space, one, two, three, and then a right parenthesis. So I call it the trifecta because you're doing <laughs> three spaces three times, and we're going to bring in three Hebrew words. Now, the way this, the reason you do this is because Hebrew switches from right to left and it will mess up your searches. Also, we want to search on all the possibilities, the manuscript, the lemma, and the transliteration. So let's take the word formless and void. Let's right-click on the word void. We're going to grab. Now, in this case, when you do with nouns, they tend to be the same word, which we don't want to do. So that's why I always look to see if there is a little bit of difference. So let's do this on a verb. That's going to be a bigger deal. So we're going to right-click on moving. And you can see now there's a difference between the, the, the manuscript and the lemma. So I'm going to click on the manuscript, choose copy, go into my search criteria, and just click twice until I'm somewhere in the middle of that space. And then just paste. And there you go. We're done. Now we right-click once again on the Hebrew word, choose the lemma, and this time we choose copy reference text. A little bit different menu options to get it. Click once and then click twice. Get in the middle space. You're good to go. Now the transliteration is uh, a little different. This is where the triple click searching comes in handy. Notice that we're using the triple again. So I'm going to triple it. That opens up my dictionary where I can get quick access to the transliteration. We'll select it, choose copy. We're good to go. And then we can paste that baby right in there. Now, you may sometimes see parentheses inside some of these words. And when you see those, you want to remove them. So here's a good example. Rahasa. When you copy and paste that transliteration, you'll want to copy everything within the big parentheses. When you paste that, you want to remove these parentheses. Those will interfere in the search results. So now we've got the manuscript, we've got the lemma, we've got the transliteration, and now we can search our whole library for this word. And you're going to discover that sometimes books quote the manuscript, sometimes they quote the lemma, sometimes they quote the transliteration. And that's going to give you the most possible hits. And this is a huge time saver for finding information. Now, I typically won't 
do this search all by itself. I will do near. And because I'm studying Genesis 1-2, I want to narrow my search results. So I typed in near space Genesis 1-2. I click the Bible verse reference below with the red ribbon. And then I run that search. That'll narrow down my search, give me the context of Genesis 1-2. And now I can really find every place that discusses this in Genesis 1-2. I love this feature and will allow you to find more information on your words that you're studying more easily. You only need to do this for Hebrew. You do not need to do this for Greek. All right, that takes care of shortcut number 35. Let's look at shortcut number 36. And these next two shortcuts are just what I call book shortcuts, all right? Uh, Having one good book can save you an enormous amount of time. So this first one is Bruce Metzger. And I'm just going to type in Metzger and text. A textual commentary on the Greek New Testament second edition. So I'm going to click on that, Bruce Metzger. Now, the reason I, I bring up this shortcut is behind every manuscript, there are a lot of other manuscripts. That's how we have our Bible. We have lots and lots of copies. We compared them all, reconstructed them, and we made a Bible. We did that for the Old Testament. We did that for the New Testament. Sometimes, though, there's some debates on the manuscripts, the various ones that were used, older, newer, newer. Western, Alexandria, uh, Alexandrian, uh, Byzantine, majority, etc. So this book will tell you right away if there is a significant textual issue and what the problem is. And that is just going to save you time and also help you avoid issues. This is so important because sometimes there is stuff in the text you got to know about. And if you don't, you could run into some problems. So whenever I'm teaching, preaching, I'll just take a quick look and this will tell me if I should be concerned about anything or if I need to be aware of anything. And so be aware of the instant uh, textual insights by Bruce Mesker. All right, that was shortcut number 36. Let's go to shortcut number 37 and we'll do another book shortcut. This is another favorite one of mine. I'm gonna click the library icon. and We're gonna do the IVP background. This is a nice little two volume set. I'm going to click on the second volume. You can see I, I've used this many times. I have these other ones that are in there as well. So let me go ahead and just change those parallel texts to be hidden. So the way I use this is I open up my Bible and I will link these. So I'll click on home, link set A. I'll click on home, link set A. And basically, I'm going to go to 1 Peter 1.12. This is to let me know if there's any significant historical background information I need to be aware of. So here in 1 Peter 1, 12, and there is a little bit of a note on verse 12. So I would read this to see how applicable it is. And then I would go to verse 13, and now I can see more. And this can be very helpful. Uh, let's go to 2 Peter 1, 12, and there we go. This will save you a lot of time because trying to find background information can be very time-consuming. You have to check out a lot of books. I have discovered with this resource and similar ones like this, they found the most important relevant information. So be aware of that. Let's go to shortcut number 38, the library view. This is something a lot lot of people overlook for a variety of reasons. So I'm going to left click on my library icon and drag that into the the layout space. So left click and drag. I'm going to drag it to the middle so it fills up my whole window. Now you probably noticed that my view is a little bit maybe different than yours. And what's going on is I've changed the view right here with this icon, and I have the details view. If you have cover view, you're not going to see this information. And if you have tile view, again, you're not going to see this information. It's only visible in the details view. And now I have access to these various columns of information. In fact, if I right-click on the column name, you can see the other columns that are available. The ones with the checks are the ones that we have viewing. The ones without the checks are not currently viewable. So if we want one to disappear, we click it and we right click on the the title of the column again. And then if we want to view it, we just click it. And there you go. So now each column is viewed. Now, the reason this is a shortcut is of what we can do with that. So you'll notice this column called type. Very, very important. So I'm going to type in type colon and I'm going to use what's in there, Bible. Now, you'll see now that my list of books has been limited to just Bible. You see that? That's it. Pretty awesome. And if I back up and delete type, now I can choose another one. So let's say I want to look at sermons. There we go. Now I'm looking at sermons 
if I just do sermon, then I get sermon outlines and so forth. So very, very useful. So this is a great way for you to find books. Now let's take this one step further. If you scroll to the right, you're going to see subjects. This is so important. I do this all the time. So let's say I have a book uh, on uh, the Millennial Kingdom, let's say. All right, so I'm going to go Millennial Kingdom. And I'm going to go over here to the left, and I've got some books. And uh, let's see, The Meaning of the Millennium, Four Views. Okay, that's pretty much on it, or Three Views of the Millennium and Beyond. So what we do is we click once, not on the title and name itself, but in that white space. So the row is selected in gray. And then if we go over to the right, we're going to see some tagging in the subjects column. So what we could do is we could do subjects uh, millennium. So let's do that. Let's type in subject. Now let's back up before I do that. So look at the word, the book count, 17 results. Now if we put in subject colon and we do millennium, and I like to put a star on it, we got 37 results. Why is that? Because sometimes the subject is not mentioned in the title and you'd be missing out on those books. So this shortcut helps you find all the books that discuss this. And this is really, really great. We have a lot, of more, a lot more books that deal with the Millennial Kingdom than we originally thought, which is that previous search. So I love that feature. Uh, that is shortcut number 38. Let's go to shortcut number 39, devotional. So let's stay with our library window open. We're going to put in type colon, and I'm going to put in the word devote, or just, yeah, D-E-V-O-T. And you're going to see there's two types. There's devotional and there's calendar devotional. We want calendar devotional. So I'm just going to change devote to calendar since that's the unique word. And there we go. Now we have all our calendar devotionals. These are books that have been lined up to the days of the calendar. Now let's say we want to uh, use one of these books. So here's 365 Days with Spurgeon, Volume 1. I'm going to left-click on the title, hold the left mouse button down. I'm going to drag that to the shortcut toolbar. Now, today is February 20th. When I click on this book, it goes right to February 20th. And then tomorrow on the 21st, if I click it, it'll be tomorrow. So this is a great little feature that if you have a particular devotional you like to read, just put in the shortcut toolbar, make sure it's a calendar devotional, and before you know it, you've got an instant look up to the day that you're reading on. And I love that capability. All right, we're getting down to our last 10. And this is shortcut number 40, and that is format your Bible. All right, so let me go ahead and right-click and remove that icon, just to make things simple. And I'm going to go ahead and click on my library icon and open the ESV. That's one way to do it. Or we can go to our little command box and type in ESV. And we can just click open English Standard Version. That's a nice little shortcut right there. Now, the format in the Bible is really important. You only have to, uh, the New American Standard, you don't have to do this, but every other Bible you do. So here we are, we're traditional Bible. It's paragraph format, very nice. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this easier to read. So we're going to click on formatting, and then we're going to click on reformat. We're going to enable the reformat text, and then we're going to check the Bible text box. And then we can decide what we want to see and not want to see. So Bible text formatting, that means italicized, bold, things like that. Chapter verse numbers, kind of important, I'd leave that there. Footnote indicators, you may not like those, so you can hide those, uh, very handy. Non-biblical text, these are the chapter titles, paragraph titles, etc. But here's the nice one, one verse per line. If you click it, there it is. Now the ESV can read like a versified Bible. Absolutely love that. Now, if you like all this, you can just float your mouse over Bible text, click the three dots, and you can say select all, and that'll grab all of these. Now, look what it did. It also enabled discourse and propositional outline, so be aware of that. But if you go down to the individual ones, like one verse per line, and you click it, you can say show in all appropriate books. And now, when Bible text is enabled, reformats enabled, all those Bibles will be versified one verse at a time. Really great feature. All right, that's shortcut number 40. Let's go to shortcut number 41. Welcome to the mall.